This video demonstrates our technique of performing an anterior medialization osteotomy of the tibial tubercle. After a midline longitudinal skin incision is made, dissection is carried sharply down to the patellar tendon, tibial tubercle, and patella. Skin flaps are developed and meticulous hemostasis is obtained. The patellar tendon and tibial tubercle are sharply isolated and the lateral side of the patellar tendon is freed. A fasciotomy is then performed, releasing the proximal portion of the anterior tibial fascia. The lateral retinaculum is then carefully opened at the inferior lateral tip of the patella. The lateral release is carried far enough proximally to allow the patella to center. Once the appropriate amount of correction is obtained, the medial side of the patellar tendon is identified and the tendon is freed from the underlying fat pad. Next, electrocautery is used to identify and mark the borders of the tibial tubercle. Electrocautery is also used to mark the desired positions of the two screws used to secure the osteotomy. Aiming parallel to the posterior tibial slope, the near cortex is drilled with a 4.5 millimeter drill on the desired positions for the two screws. Care is taken not to penetrate the far cortex and the screw holes are slightly offset to prevent formation of a stress riser. An oscillating saw is then used to score the cortex, outlining an approximately 1.5 by 3 centimeter long bone block. Care is taken to preserve enough bone on either side of the screw holes to prevent the block from splitting when the screws are placed. The distal and lateral cuts are made approximately 1 centimeter in depth. The lateral cut is made at approximately 45 degree angle. The anterior position is created by an oblique undercutting of the tibial tubercle allowing for a combination of medial and anterior translation to the desired degree. Once the osteotomy is completed, the saw blade can be used to elevate the bone block anteriorly. If the patient has patella alta, the tubercle can be moved downward because it's completely freed from the tibia. This is done by cutting an appropriate size gap below the tubercle for the bone block to fit into. Likewise, if the patient has patellar baja, the tubercle can be moved superiorly for the desired amount of correction. An osteotome is used to lever the tubercle into the desired position, achieving the appropriate amount of correction. A K-wire is used to temporarily hold the bone block in place. Through the two previously made drill holes, the far cortex of the tibia is drilled with a 3.2 millimeter drill in the superior medial safe zone. Two 4.5 millimeter cortical screws are placed securing the tubercle in the desired position with compression. Once the tubercle is secured in the corrected position, the defect created by the prior lateral release is closed by rotating a flap of tissue from the adjacent iliotibial band. A wide strip of the iliotibial band starting at the patellar margin and distally near the joint line is carefully developed leaving the synovium intact. This strip of tissue is mobilized enough to allow it to be rotated up to the lateral side of the patella and prevent development of lateral side laxity and medial subluxation. The repair also restores the load sharing function of the lateral retinaculum and patellofemoral contact pressures are normalized. Flap closure is performed with interrupted figure of eight sutures using number two Vicryl. If possible, the synovium is mobilized and brought up to close any remaining defect. Care is taken not to over tighten the synovium and thus block full excursion of the patella and patellar tendon. Lastly, the bony defect is bone grafted prior to closure.